For many years, bouldering, the act of climbing difficult lines up small rocks without a rope, was largely viewed as mere practice for real climbing. But throughout the 90s, this attitude began to change. As bouldering became recognized as its own sport, Stony Point became more popular than ever. In the 90s, right, bouldering became its own sub-sport of climbing, uh, just a, really a sport unto itself, a very, very pure sport. And uh, it really has stayed pretty intense since then. It's not something that's faded out. It's, it's got more and, and more difficult, and I don't know, probably the hardest climbs in the world are all boulder problems nowadays. During this time, a new school crew of young, strong, and extremely motivated boulderers were scavenging Stony Point for the area's last great projects. Between the group of Jeff Johnson, Paul Anderson, Demetrius Fritz, and Aaron Sandlow, there wasn't much that could stop them. During the early 90s, between Jeff and Paul, I don't think there was a stronger climber in fucking Boulder in fucking Southern California, if not California. Well, I remember Demi, Jeff, and those guys like being like the hard crew. If you followed them around on their circuit, they basically had probably a dozen problems. And I remember I couldn't touch any of them. I was amazed at like what those guys could pull on and what they could pull off. Because we spot so much nowadays compared to, you know, I mean, before it was just like, cool, you know, it'd be death landing. You just go, there it is, five, you know, v, you know, 5'11", and you just, everybody would sit back, do bongs, chill. And, you know, just watch you fall hard, do the dance, fucking as you come down and fucking, what, yeah. As the leader of the group, Jeff Johnson set new standards for the meanings of power, control, and boldness. Jeff Johnson was young, brash, blonde, um, strong, bold, pushed hard, climbed hard, took Stoney to a new level. You know, watching him climb was, uh, you know, like watching a big wave surfer drop into a huge wave just with complete control and confidence. Well, Jeff, uh, probably the best climber I've ever climbed with in my life. Strongest mentally, physically, vision, could just see, fucking instantly see the line. Of all his first ascents at Stony Point, Jeff Johnson's magnum opus is undoubtedly the Johnson problem. Over the years, Stony Point has seen many big name climbers come and go, but perhaps none with a bigger personality than the late Michael Reardon. Notorious as one of the leading free soloists in the world, Reardon was a master in the deadly game of ropeless climbing. He was also a Stony local and an active member of the community. With a larger than life personality that exuded positive vibes, Reardon was one of the most encouraging climbers at the point. Michael Reardon was a, was, a, was a local climber, and uh, he was a, a very exuberant character. 
and uh, very, very friendly. And he was obviously, he was a very good climber. Some people have a certain aura about them. They bring like the madness, they bring the party when they walk up. And it's funny because Mike could do that, just that like boiled up from inside of him, you know. And it would only take a few minutes for that guy to crack the ice. Man, he'd have you telling stories or, or just swapping big lies or anything. He really was someone who was a charismatic person and was really fun to hang with. I shot some pictures of him on the prow and uh, I, I got to see him solo something. That actually, I think the, the prow is actually quite a gnarly solo because the prow is quite a slippery climb in one spot. And you know, he came up the edge and came around the corner and maybe came back again and took another look at it and came back and he worked his way through it, never looking, you know, horrified or anything like that. Just very carefully worked his way up and it was very impressive to watch. In 2007, while on a climbing trip to Ireland, Michael Reardon was tragically swept out to sea by a rogue wave and never seen again. His loss was mourned throughout the whole climbing world, but perhaps nowhere more so than his home crag, Stony Point.